Hi, and welcome to the Stock Scores Market Minutes for May 6, 2013. This week's topic, momentum or bottom fish. We'll look at how stocks behave at different phases of their long-term upward trend. A reminder that I will be in Toronto Saturday, May 11th from 9 till 11, and Montreal Sunday, May 12th, also from 9 to 11, for the Stock Scores Canadian Active Trader Expo. This is free to attend. I hope to see many of you from Toronto and Montreal out at the event. To register, go to the address that you see on screen. That's stockscores.com slash skate with a C. Hope to see you there. All right, let's talk a little bit about momentum or bottom fish. The stocks that are in long-lasting trends have momentum that is likely to continue. Stocks that are just starting their trends have more upside potential. Now, these are two conflicting things because you have to balance the probability of success with reward for risk potential. The more momentum a stock has, that is, the farther it is into the trend, the more risk. The more reward potential, the lower the probability of success. Now let's look at a chart here and we'll see what that means. So I've brought up a chart of TELUS, which has been in a three and a half year upward trend. And you can see that at the bottom Part of the trend early in 2010 the stock was just breaking out through resistance from sideways trading now at that time the probability of success was lower because the stock didn't have any upward momentum however it also had a much greater reward potential because it was just getting started in that trend if we look at the stock as it is right now, we've got a higher probability of success if we buy the stock because it has that strong upward momentum. However, it has got a lot more risk as well because the farther stocks get into their trend, the closer they are to their top and therefore the more downside potential they have. What we want to do when we're playing momentum is buy the pullbacks to the upward trend line. Now, if we're going to bottom fish stocks, trying to get those stocks that are just turning from a downward trend into an upward trend, we want to focus on abnormal trading activity from low price volatility. So let's go back to the chart now, and you can see that at my first arrow on the left, the stock was just breaking from a consolidation pattern, a rising bottom breaking through resistance. That's a sign that the market is getting optimistic and excited about the stock. Now along the way in that trend, we see a number of pullbacks to the trend line. And those are the best times to buy a stock that has momentum. Buy short-term weakness in a stock that has long-term strength. You'll improve your risk reward for the trade and the probability of success will remain high because of that upward momentum. All right, let's get into the analysis. Here's the chart of the S&P 500. Everyone saying the trend must end, it's May, time to go away. Well, the chart doesn't support it. This market is in a strong upward trend. It is near the top of its upward channel. And so I'm not real eager about initiating positions in those large cap stocks that have led this rally. But we shouldn't call this trend over until the market breaks down from a falling top and breaks down through that upward trend line that I have drawn in green. So for now... We must remain bullish on the S&P, although we also must recognize the risk given the stock is, or pardon me, the market is near the top of that upward sloping channel. Here's a chart of the TSX and really a difficult chart to read because this market has been all over the place. Now in the last few days we have broken that downward trend line. The expectation was that the market would rally up to that downward trend line and get stuck, but it's actually been able to break through. And we shouldn't forget the fact that this market has gone up for about three weeks in a row. And so that even though it's broken that resistance at that red trend line that I've drawn on the screen there, um, we want to be careful because it's a good chance it pulls back before it goes higher. So a positive sign that the market has broken that downward trend line, but don't forget that there is likely to be some short-term profit-taking for the people that pick the bottom appropriately. Here's a chart of the TLT, which is the Treasury Bond ETF Fund. You can see it's setting up for a head and shoulders top. Now, if the market breaks down through that green neckline of the head and shoulders pattern, we should be cautious in some ways. I mean, that means that the Treasury prices are going to go down. That means yields go up. 
that makes bonds more attractive could move money out of stocks and back into bonds. I don't really think that's going to happen because I think that money is still attracted to the stock market for the better returns that it offers. But we're starting to see a little bit of a disconnect here as the treasuries roll over. Now again, the treasuries haven't broken the neckline yet. It's probably at least a couple of weeks away before that happens, if it happens at all. But it's something to keep an eye on here. If that neckline is broken, that means money's coming out of treasuries. Does that mean it's going into the stock market in search of better returns? Or does it mean that money itself is just moving out of the U.S. because the U.S. has gone up so strong that it's starting to get risky? People start to think maybe the Fed is going to stop stimulating the economy the way they have. That could cause money to come out of the U.S. as well, and that could hurt that stock market. So we got to watch this real closely and how these two start to behave with one another um, because they've really, in the last little while, they've behaved in tandem as the uh, money is just wanting to come back into the U.S. in any way it can, whether it's in treasuries or in stocks. All right, the gold ETF here is in that parabolic downward trend, but it's in, been in a very narrow range over the last week. And so what we want to watch for here is, is it going to break up through that little red trend line that I've drawn, the shortest one? Or is it going to break down from that and take another parabolic leap to the downside? And we can't say yet until we get that break from this low volatility. The range today was very, very narrow in gold. And that's sort of like the eye of the storm, you know, the eye of the hurricane. It's very calm right now and quiet. If we get a break to the upside, we're going to rally likely up to that next downward trend line. But if we break to the downside, we could get a sharp decline here. And anyone that is still long gold will want to run for cover if that happens. Oil has had a pretty good couple of weeks. It bounced off of support as I expected it would. But it has now rallied up to resistance at the top of that pattern. That's a descending triangle pattern. So very likely that oil is going to get stuck here, perhaps roll over. My general feeling is that oil is more likely to go lower than higher in the next few days. The only caveat on that, and this is always the caveat with oil, is of course there's lots of tension in the Middle East with Syria and that sort of thing. And if that escalates, we could break through that red line and go for a very quick march higher. That's usually short-lived because the problems in the Middle East usually get sorted out eventually. We saw it when Libya was having its problems uh, last year. If that happens again, we could see a quick pop in oil, break that downward cycle of falling tops, but don't expect that that's a long-term effect. Ultimately, the long-term fundamentals of oil are based on global demand, which is an improving global economy. And we're still not there yet, I don't think. The VIX, the fear index, in that downward trend, it is forming some support, but really there's really no sign of fear in the market here, and therefore that's a positive for stocks. But you, know, you want to watch this closely, because if you get a spike up in fear and you break that cycle of falling tops, well, maybe we'll start to see the stock market roll over. For now, nothing to worry about, but keep an eye on it, as I always do. So U.S. stocks, I'm bullish. Again, no reason to not be bullish. The trend is up. The only thing you have to be concerned about is the fact that we're at the top of that upward sloping channel, and therefore there's some likelihood that we'll see some profit taking soon. Canadian stocks, I'm neutral. It's a very difficult chart to read. Gold neutral, but again, we want to watch closely for that break, either up or down. And oil on bear simply because it's coming into resistance. The strong upward momentum continues to be the story in the large cap U.S. stocks. The reward for risk entering this market is not great. You know, buying here, initiating positions in these really uh, strong U.S. large cap stocks has got more downside potential in my mind than upside potential. So you got to be a little bit cautious with that trade. The TSX has stabilized, but it is difficult to predict. Watch for gold to break from this past week's low volatility. And as I said, oil is likely to stall at resistance. Well, that has been the Stock Scores Market Minutes for May 6, 2013. Have a great week in the market and trade well.